All right, good morning to everybody. We'd like to go ahead and get our media availability started. We are joined right now by Marcus Ambrose, driver of the number nine Stanley CTC Jumpstart Ford. Marcus is our two-time defending race winner at Watkins Glen, looking to be the third driver to win three in a row here. Marcus, you've obviously had a lot of success. Talk a little bit about your outlook on the weekend. Well, I don't know much about uh, what's going to happen, but I do know I've got Tony Stewart covered. I think uh, he won't be a challenger this weekend. We haven't tested here. Uh, I know a lot of teams have. So uh, I'm a little cautious going into uh, Friday's practice here, especially with the, with the weather. You know, we, we may not get as much track time as what we wanted to. So uh, we're going to have to be uh, on our toes here early on the weekend to try to get the car dialed in and, and, uh, and get a feel on this, uh, this new machine here, the new Gen 6 car. We anticipate we'll be fast around here. It's got more downforce, and uh, that should help us, especially through uh, turn two, three, and four, and uh, will probably help us everywhere, but uh, particularly up the hill where there's normally a lot of speed here when the car's dialed in. So I think you're going to see uh, fast speeds, and uh, we, we're certainly going to have to have a different set up on the car than what we had last year and uh, we just have to make sure that our our assumptions and our guess works right here in practice and, and hopefully it is and we can get focused on uh, qualifying and uh, and qualifying in the front to control the race all right and we'll open it up to questions please state your name and affiliation start up here with jeff gluck I got you. Um, I, I was just wondering about that last lap uh, a year later. I mean, um, I'm sure people ask you about it all the time, and, and uh, it comes up all the time. But reflecting on it now, I mean, wh what's your impressions of it? What's your memories of it? Um, is it hold a special place in, in your in your mind? I guess. Yeah, it's it's obviously been very topical this week. Um, you know, we've done a lot of media around that last lap, and to be honest with you, until I really got to this week, I hadn't even watched a replay. So. You know, uh, the race was awesome, and, uh, you know, it was an incredible moment. I was there. I was behind the wheel. It was a great feeling to win that race against, uh, you know, Brad and, and Kyle. Uh, if the circumstances had have uh, fallen the same way again, I may not have won it. You know, it's just, uh, it, was, it was quite a, a lucky break for me to get that win, but I'll take it, and I enjoyed it. But I haven't thought anything about it since. And, um, you know, there's been obviously a lot of talk about it this week, and we've done some media around that last lap. So I guess it's uh, it's been pushed back to the front of my mind. But to be honest with you, um, I look at that race, and, and I wish I had a won it by eight seconds, not not by, you know, one car length at the end, because that's when you can dominate a race, and it's when you feel like you've done the best job. So for me, uh, it was great, a great day, great day for our team. Uh, it'll go down in my racing history as one of my all-time uh, favourite moments. But it's in the past, you know, we, uh, as race car drivers, we always look forward and uh, this weekend will be no guarantee. So uh, I'm just really focused on this weekend and trying to do a good job for my team. All right, we'll go to Bob Pockris and then we'll come back up front. Um, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. Uh, obviously, in light of Tony's injury, a lot of talk about guys racing other series. Um, you don't race a lot of other series I don't think you really have since you've come to NASCAR. Is that because you haven't gotten the opportunity? Is it because you want to just focus on what you're doing? Or do you feel like, you know, it's, it's just too 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 risky to do something else that, other than the primary it's, thing you're doing? It's because I've got two kids under 10. <laughs> I mean, that bottom line, I'm trying to balance, uh, you know, pleasure work and family. So for me, uh, NASCAR is a very heavy schedule. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that when I have... Uh, some days that aren't, you know, directly involved in NASCAR competition that I, I spend it with my family. So uh, it's a it's a personal choice for me. Um, I hope that I hope Tony gets better soon. Um, you know, we we all uh, admire, respect Tony for who he is and what a racer he is. I mean, at the end of the day, we are race car drivers. We race, and uh, and uh, not that you want anyone to get hurt, but he he was he he was he got hurt doing what. He does. I mean, he's a race car driver. He races cars. So um, I hope it doesn't come down too hard and heavy on him. Um, you know, he um, he does it because he loves racing, and that we can't forget that, right? And uh, and anyone who does race outside their direct day jobs, um, you know, they um, they deserve the respect of, of following their passion. You know, for me, my personal choice is that I've got a young family, and they're away from Australia, and their their grandparents and uh, and immediate family. So I just try to make sure I keep as balanced as I can. Um, I'd love to race 
three or four times a week would be fantastic, but uh, life is not that simple. All right, we'll go to MRN in the middle. Ryan Nelson, Motor Racing Network. If uh, Well, you're going for your third straight year, but it's with the Gen 6 car this year, and I guess with the prospect, uh, the possibility that rain could again wash out all practice today, how much does that set you back going into uh, qualifying in a race with very little practice, uh, especially with a brand new car here? Certainly won't help. I mean, uh, I think the teams that tested here will have a huge advantage if, uh, if we don't get much track time today. Uh, from my perspective, I probably only want or need, you know, five, ten laps, uh, maybe, you know, a two or three lap run to get, you know, uh, re-baselined and maybe just a couple of changes to get a direction for the race. I'd feel much better if we got some track time today. Um, I'm not sure what NASCAR will do with the schedule if we don't get practice today, whether they'll give us a practice in the morning or change qualifying, whatever. It's up to their, you know, it's up to them to decide what they want to do there. But I'd love to get a little bit of track time um, I don't need an awful lot, but certainly it will be an advantage to the teams that came up here and, and did the hard work and, and tested, and that's what you know makes makes our sport great. You know, if you put the work in and, and you plan out your weekends and your your, your season, it could uh, it can really help. Marcus, uh, winning two in a row here is is pretty amazing, and you talk about the chances of winning three in a row, and how amazing would that be, and how difficult is that going to be? Well, if you play poker, I mean, the chances of continuing to win get, get slimmer as you, as you win. So I, I think it's going to be a really hard weekend for us. Um, I, I don't anticipate domination. Um, I know we're going to be a contender. I know we're going to be up there in the mix. Uh, but there is certainly no guarantee of success here, and we have to make sure we, we get going here in practice if we get some and, uh, and, and get, in the, get on the front foot and hopefully have a car that's close that we can be ready. So I, I feel like I'm a little behind coming into this weekend, especially with the inclement weather. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it works out. Well, Woody came with MRN. I was talking with your crew chief earlier this week, and he was commenting about how you're so certain when you come to a road course about what you want and how you need the car to be. Can you describe the, the feeling you have at a road course versus the feeling you have at an oval in terms of your, your confidence and, and how different that situation feels to you walking in? Yeah, cer certainly, and uh, yeah, it's a question that, that, that we talk about a lot, that, you know, I can come to a road course and, and, and generally run, you know, top ten every time we come, yet we, we go to ovals and we're more hit and miss. Um, the only way I can actually sort of square that away in my mind is that, you know, when you go oval racing, uh, the setups of the cars are obviously very, very important. When you go road racing, it's more about just getting the car even and just sort of not doing anything crazy. So for me, I know when the car's sort of not feeling right that I can get it close and then I'll just do the rest. When I go oval racing, you know, the cars are so twisted and contorted with their setups that if you miss it by half a pound of tyre pressure or a pound of, or, you know, 20 pounds of spring rate or something like that, you can have a terrible day. So uh, for me, when you go road racing, it's not so much about setting the car up to the very edge. It's more about just making it easy to drive and then I'll do the rest. So I guess that gives me... Uh, some confident cause I, confidence because I've been to these tracks several times, run well, I know what I need to feel, and so I'm able to get there quickly, uh, probably quicker than, than most. All right, we'll come up front here, and then we'll go to Marty Smith in the back. Mike Embry, you, you have a rare chance this weekend to race against a, a fellow countryman in, in this series. You have a background with Owen Wright, and, and how's it feel to yeah. have him in the race? Yeah, I do. Owen Kelly, I raced against him from uh, 10 years of age. We grew up about uh, 50 miles apart from each other. Uh, we're good friends. We have been for, for years. He's been calling me all morning, and I've turned my phone off. I'm not helping him any. <laughs> he can help himself. <laughs> I wish him the best. I'm just kidding. He, I'll, I'll give him a call here in a minute, and I'll, I'll tell him a lie or two. Marty Smith, ESPN. Marcos, I'm curious how maybe your mindset or approach might differ going into a weekend here or maybe at Sonoma where you are a focus of the field. People know you're going to have an opportunity to win as opposed to maybe an oval track where you might not be in the forefront of everyone's mind. How do you prepare differently or, or think differently entering the weekend? Yeah, it's actually a, a flip side for me. So, you know, last week qualified eighth and finished 12th and, you know, it was a decent day or not the day we wanted, but it was still, you know, we're, we're, we're in the middle of the thing, middle of the race. Um, and I come here and, and all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, you're expected to win. 
Uh, so for me, it's actually opposite. It's the it's, this weekend is actually more of a stress out than than last week, and uh, and that's hard to sometimes balance out. Is that you know the weight of expectation from our team? The sponsors know it's going to be you know, should be a good weekend, and the and the team expect a good weekend, and and you guys do, and the fans do. So all of a sudden, if you don't perform on those days, it adds even more pressure to the you know to what you do every other week. So um, for me. Um, yeah, I like these weekends. It's great to, uh, to to contend, but it's only one race out of a whole season. So, um, you know, I keep striving with our team to get better every week on the ovals and hopefully coming up here, you know, you're going to be talking about me on other weekends, not just road course races. All right, we'll go over here. Hi, Ed Coons from Gator Racing. To your left, Marcos. Hi. Got it. Um, I met somebody from Alice Springs um, the other day who specifically is here to watch you road race. He's telling me about some awesome V8 stories and you know how the fans do it back home and are you aware of the contingent of people that specifically come to the u.s to watch you race specifically at watkins Glen? yeah so if you've been to outback steakhouse alice did not cook the chicken alice springs is actually a uh, is a town right in the center of australia it's probably one of the most isolated cities hottest cities in the world so um, i've got some good friends there and uh it's great that they've come this far i mean it must must have been a long walk for them uh must have been on walkabout i guess and got lost but uh, it's, um, it's a great country, but it's only 20 million people. And uh, Fiat Supercar is fantastic. You know, I, I, um, I learned a lot and, uh, and did a lot of winning down there, but uh, I'm here for a reason. You know, NASCAR is the biggest form of racing, and, uh, and that's why I, I love coming and competing in NASCAR at the Spring Cup level. It's the biggest form of racing for me, from my perspective, in the world. And, uh, and it's great that Australians can come over here and, and enjoy the same thing as a fan. So uh, we do a lot of work behind the scenes to try to, you know, uh, lift up the profile of NASCAR in Australia, and there is a big fan base down there. It's great they can come across and and uh, and spend their money here in the US. You know, boost the economy a little bit. I, Australia is uh, going through a tough time, so uh, you may see less of them coming across here. But uh, certainly, it's fun to see Australians. I've got a few here, uh, friends coming, and uh, cheer us on. All right, we have time for one last question. If anybody has one. Go up front to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Can you talk about the aggression at a track like this and capitalizing on the opportunity a track like this allows you to, uh, to do things maybe that people wouldn't do on an oval and how much do you think we're going to see of that? Well, from our perspective, we've had a rough year outside the top 20 in points. So, you know, we're, we're close to getting inside the top 20. So we want a really strong weekend to, to give ourselves a chance to get back in there. And then anything can happen, you know. So you've got to put yourself uh, on a macro view first and look at the, the whole year and what we need to do to, to, uh, to have a, a, a stronger run home. Uh, the aggression side of it, you know, everyone says that I'm aggressive, but actually I don't feel that way on a road course. I actually I feel like I'm more in, more controlled. Uh, around these places, obviously um, to pass cars and, and whatnot, you need to have uh, strong technique and you need to be aggressive to, to get past that aero push or the, the aero imbalance that you get when you're trying to make things happen and, and, uh, and wearing out tyres and brakes and things like that. But generally when I'm doing a lap, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm actually being too aggressive. I actually tell myself the opposite, to calm down and just try to be smooth. All right. Thank you, Marcus, and good Thank luck you. this weekend. Thanks.